I feel like we saw each other really recently, but I think when we did the interview, it was like May. Yeah, it was a long time ago. ago. You were a great guest. So if you have time, when you have time, we'd love to have you back. I would always love to be a guest and and welcome everybody. We're just chit-chatting here. I've got Chelsea with me and we are um, just chatting while I'm getting everybody in here and getting this live on Facebook and doing all the things we do. Um, for our webinar. Don't forget, if you need closed captioning, that is available for you. Um, And you can just press on that link. Okay, we are live streaming now. We are recording now. We are having everybody pop in and join us. You can use the chat to tell us who's here. Um, Is anyone else having problems hearing? I see Shannon is having a hard time with sound. Can I get, um, can I get something? Okay, everyone else can hear. Okay, Shannon. Uh, can't hear. Um, all righty. I would say I'm going to have to type her a message in a second because obviously she can't hear me. So, <laughs> all right. Well, welcome to another one of our, in fact, our, uh, this is our first one of the year, our first sponsor webinar of the year for the Women in Publishing Summit. We are so excited to have all of you here. For those of you who are new to the conference, my name is Alexa Bigwarf. I host this amazing event. We are only 40 days out from the 2023 conference. So I would like to take a moment to remind everyone, if you haven't gotten your ticket yet, get your tickets soon. And in fact, we have a very special promo happening today. And that is anyone who purchases a ticket between 1 p.m. Eastern and we'll say 3 p.m. Eastern for people who might be listening while they're doing other things. We're going to give you a BOGO. So I'm going to pick somebody who purchases a ticket between 1 o'clock p.m. and 3 o'clock p.m. today um, at womeninpublishingsummit.com and um, we'll pick one winner and that winner will be able to give a ticket to a friend because these things are so much more fun um, when you bring a friend along. So please grab your ticket um, and we will pick a winner and announce that um, today probably because that should be easy to to determine quickly. So that'll be fun. And we we have so much exciting stuff going on. and yep, we'll we'll try and do some other promos for people who already have tickets as we get closer. Uh, today, uh, we will, we're trying to generate some tickets today. So, you know, we're talking about marketing and selling. So in all transparency, my audience knows me. One of the best ways that I love to be transparent about what we do as well. One of the best ways that you can market and sell things is by offering like short term, really big incentives, et cetera, et cetera. So there you have it. Okay, so what are we getting into today? We are talking about other forms of selling your book and other opportunities for you to have other than just sending people to Amazon. Um, Amazon may be the right option for people, but there's a lot of other people who would like to be able to do things like collect email addresses from people who are purchasing their books so that you can follow up with them and get them to leave reviews or other things that you'd like to be able to do from that. So Lulu, is a wonderful company that has provided, that has another option, first of all, for printing options, because sometimes, like, especially if you're doing a specialty book, like a cookbook or a children's book or other types of books that print on demand isn't always a great option for you. Uh, Lulu has print options. So they have print options and they also help authors sell their books in other ways and self-publishing assist opportunities. So today we have Chelsea Bennett, who is the education and community manager for Lulu.com and host of Lulu's webinar series and YouTube series, Lulu University. Her areas of expertise include self-publishing, print-on-demand technology, building an author brand, direct sales, and marketing. When not thinking about publishing, she can be found playing disc golf with her husband or having in-depth conversations about the universe with her cat, Batman. So (laughs) I love that. Um, So we are, we are going to dig into a specific topic today. While Chelsea could talk to you about a lot of different topics today, we're going to be talking about primarily selling from your website and, um, and whatever else she decides to throw into that. But I do want to take a moment to say thank you to Lulu very much for being a silver sponsor of the conference. Um, Our sponsors allow us to keep the pricing at a very reasonable uh, rate and allow us to bring so much wonderful content throughout the year, not just, not just the, uh, the week of the event and, and also help us feature 
tools and services that our audience is looking for in a way that, you know, allows them to see what you have and brings you in. And so we're just, we're very grateful to you all and to you for being here today to do this. All right. Hello, everyone. Is that my cue? Is that my that cue? That was your cue, but you okay. know what? I just realized before I kicked that off, just one, one, sorry. That was a good test run. <laughs> awkward, okay. Got awkward it. transition. Got there. it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was the test run. Um, if you have a question for uh, for Chelsea during this conversation, please make sure that you use the Q&A box so that it doesn't get lost in, um, in the chat. And second of all, Lulu does have a special offer, a 15% off discount for not only our conference attendees, but our entire community, which is very generous. So she'll be talking about that at the end. We will, of course, be sending out the replay to everyone who registered. And as always, you can find our sponsor uh, webinar series on our, our YouTube channel. It's the Right Published Cell YouTube channel. So if you're really anxious, that's where it's going to be first. Um, and we'll send out the coupon code and all of that stuff with that information. So, all right, this is the real okay. cute. <laughs> Take it away, Chelsea. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Alexa. Um, yes. So I will hop in and share my screen. Thanks everybody for being here today. Um, I did see some, some North Carolinas in the chat. I am also in North Carolina, um, pretending like it's cold, uh, but wearing a scarf, it's like 70 degrees here today. So, um, so anyway, pretend that it's cold with me, I guess. Okay. So I will share my screen. I will say, I'm happy to take questions at the end. A lot of times when I share my screen on zoom, I'm not able to see the chat or anything like that. So um, Alexa and Nancy, if you guys just holler, if you need anything or if you see anything, um, you know, see something, say something. So I will go ahead and share my screen. We'll do. Let's see. Okay. All right. So can you see my, I think you should be able to see my entire screen there. Yep. We I'll got it. it. All right. All right. Perfect. So hello, everyone. Alexa mentioned this a little in the beginning and in the intro, but we're here today to talk about owning the customer journey. So we'll talk a little bit about Amazon. I'm sure you've heard of them. They're a newcomer in the game. Um, I just, obviously, they're they're huge. So they are successful. They're doing a lot of things right. And there are things that we can do as independent authors and independent publishers to kind of mimic their success, take on some of the tactics that they are using to sell directly to our audiences and grow our audience, grow our brands, and hopefully our bank account as well, which would be exciting. So I'm going to go ahead and let's see if I can uh, get through this. Yes. All right. So a little bit about Lulu. If you're not familiar I am with Lulu, and we've been around since 2002, so uh, like teenagers at this point. We just turned 20 last February, so actually 21 soon. Exciting. Um, so we were founded in 2002 by Bob Young. Our pu publishing platform is free to use. You only pay when you want to buy print copies of your book. We published over or printed over 3 million books and paid out over $117 million in author revenue. That number, it it chokes me up every time, not chokes me up. It could, it's emotional, but it's a staggering number. It's hard for it to start for me to say. So our mission is that Lulu is dedicated to making the world a better place, one book at a time through sustainable practices, innovative print-on-demand products, and a commitment to excellent service. I always like to plug this as well. Uh, we're a B Corp. So Lulu is proud to be a certified B Corp. If you're not familiar with the B Corp community, I always encourage everyone to take a look into this growing movement of for-profit companies who are trying to do a little bit better for our planet. Um, so if you're not familiar with what that is, please take a look. It just means that a third party kind of comes in and vets us and makes sure that make sure that we're kind of holding to standards of social and environmental performance, accountability, and transparency. So I always like to kind of throw that in there to get started and give uh, B Corps a shout out. All right, so I am Chelsea, um, as it says on the screen, and Alexa kind of told you about. Um, in my bio, the cat that I am discussing the universe with is in the shot. That is my cat, Batman. Um, whenever he was a kitten, he was like really tiny, and it was so cute to like have him on my shoulders. He's a man now. He's not. He's a Batman, not a Bat kitten. So it's a little bit harder to, to get him to do that, but he agreed for the photo shoot. So that is me. I am uh, Lulu's education and community manager, so that means I get to go around, help build our community community and help uh, not only do things like this, but also invite people to come and speak to Lulu's audience as well. Um, Alexa has graced us with her presence. So check our, out our YouTube channel. She did a great webinar with us. So that is a little bit about what I do. But now we're going to get into it. Enough about me and Batman. Let's talk about Amazon. <laughs> so I like this slide, uh, how it started. Just a little garage of Bellevue, Washington, how it's going. Obviously, uh, less hair, but more money. Jeff Bezos coming out of whatever rocket ship he owns. So they're obviously doing something right. 
Let's see if we can do some of that too. All right, so I wanted to include this quote because I think it's an interesting framework for how to think about Amazon and some of the success that they have enjoyed. Uh, so a former Amazon exec told the BBC in 2020, Amazon, they happen to sell products, but they're a data company. Each opportunity to interact with the customer is another opportunity to collect data. And as we kind of talk about direct to consumer sales and selling directly to your readers and to your audience, it's really important to keep data front of mind. So we'll be talking about that throughout. But I know that we just think Amazon, you know, they sell everything, they have everything, but really they're doing all this to collect data so they can do this better than anyone else. So that is what we're really, what we're really going to focus on today. So why are they successful? So I promise, so I promise ladies, so this is the last Jeff Bezos picture I've got in this slide deck. I won't tease you anymore. Uh, after this, it's just dogs and cats. Uh, so why is Amazon so successful? Well, convenience, right? I mean, we all know the one-click purchase from Amazon, the one-day, two-day deliveries from Amazon. Uh, they have everything that you could want. And they use analytics and data. So we're going to get into that and how you can mirror that. But as that quote let us know, every single transaction, every time you buy something, you click something, you read a review, you leave a review, Amazon is collecting that information so they can know how to do business better. They can know how to better appeal to you, how to better serve up their products. Uh, you know, the, the grouping that we see on Amazon that says other people did this or other products you might like. You are giving them that information by your behavior on their website. So paid ads is another thing they do really well. Everywhere you go, whether it's you know Amazon's website or outside of it, you're getting ads for Amazon um, through paid ads or affiliate links. They understand their customers' needs. So you know obviously they're not new. This isn't their first rodeo. They're looking at what you're doing, what the trends are, and they're they're keeping their eye or their ears on the ground or however that term goes to make sure they know what trends are coming, what people are interested in, and making sure that they have some sort of market share in that trend. They take risks. Obviously, they started out as a bookstore. So now, I mean, it would be easier for you to list what Amazon doesn't sell. Uh, but they have the prime delivery. They have their own streaming service. They're uh, doing clothes. They've got Whole Foods. You know, they own Whole Foods. So they're, they've got their hands in everything. And when you do something like that, you have to be willing to take risks to expand in that way. And so, you know, I'm not going to talk to you today about how to buy out your local like grocery chain. We're not going to go that far. But Having that mindset of trying new things and diversifying your products is always a good idea. Encouraging reviews. So there's no one, I, I would be shocked. You could drop a comment if you are not this person, but who buys anything today without looking for a review or a YouTube video or you know an internet search to find out what other people are saying about it? So obviously Amazon reviews are huge. As authors and publishers, we know this. We know that that's you know, kind of one of the gold standards that we're looking for is reviews on Amazon and elsewhere. They obviously know how to do that well. Last but not least, they've almost perfected the customer journey. So again, that's what we're here to talk about today. What is the customer journey? How can we make sure that we are owning it as individual business owners, as entrepreneurs, as publishers and authors? And what can we do to make sure it's as smooth as the process is when you go to Amazon? I mean, you really want to emulate these companies that reduce friction in the buying process to help your readers get from your homepage to the checkout page seamlessly. All right, so direct to consumer sales. We're going to talk a lot about direct to consumer sales and trends and how we can utilize this. So, if you're not familiar, direct to consumer is when a brand sells their product directly to the customer, bypassing any third party retailers, wholesalers, or other middlemen. So, we as you know, independent authors or independent publishers, you know what this is, right? This is self-publishing. This is selling your book directly to your audience. This is cutting out the middleman. So we're familiar with this, but in the broader scope of things, you know, just in general retail it is called direct to consumer. And we're going to get into some trends uh, in a little bit and talk to you about why you should use this. So why should a publisher use direct to consumer sales? But if it's brand control, so when you're selling directly and you're cutting out the middleman, you don't have to worry about what Amazon's doing. If they decide, hey, you know what? Selling books isn't really profitable for us anymore. We're going to cut that out. Or, you know, we've seen, you know, on uh, social media even, you could take this even farther. So Twitter, what's been going on with that? When you own your brand and you have a direct path or a direct way to communicate with your audience, you don't have to worry about what the billionaires are doing. You own your land, you own your audience, and you're able to connect with them directly. You can earn more revenue through direct to consumer sales. So by cutting out the middleman, you're cutting out some overhead. That's just one less kind of hand in the coffer, if you will. So you can earn more revenue per sale by cutting out that middleman and going direct. 
transparency around sustainability. So I mentioned that we're a B Corp, but you, you know, whether you use Lulu for your fulfillment or for your direct sales or not, you can be transparent around what you're doing, why you're doing it, and really get clear on your why. And we'll talk about this in our, our next slides when we talk about direct-to-consumer trends. But more and more, because it's so easy to look into a company and what their background is and why they're doing things, and if they've done things that are shady in the past, people are interested in that. And they want to spend their dollars and align their purchases with things that are important to them and companies that stand for those things as well. So one of our favorite uh, items on this list is you can own the customer data and market smarter. So we'll talk about what that means in a little bit. But when you're selling directly, you know, you get to see who's buying your products. So I'll mention this more. But when you sell through Amazon, when you sell through um, even the Lulu.com bookstore, we can tell you that someone bought your book, but we can't tell you who that person is because of privacy laws. So by selling direct, you own the data. You can see exactly who bought your book. You can reach out, connect with them and build that relationship, which will help you market smarter. Direct sales offer white label solutions. So again, keeping your brand front and center and it allows you to play the long game. So when you sell direct and you can collect this data, you can market, remarket, build out your email list and really start building relationships and turn one-time transactions into lifelong fans of your brand. All right, so let's talk about some trends. So Direct-to-consumer trends, these are for 2022. We're working on putting out the report for 2023. Um, obviously, it's new, so we'll have to collect some of the data, the newest data from last year. But some of the things that we were seeing in 2022 is that consumers are four times more likely to purchase from a company with strong brand values. So this talk today isn't really so much about what your why is, but if you are new to building an e-commerce brand, to selling directly, selling things through your own website, Understanding what your why is, being able to communicate that clearly, and being able to find folks who align with that can be a huge brand asset as you're trying to reach new audiences and sell your products, services, books, what have you. And like I said earlier, we're seeing that, that more people want to vote with their dollars on a daily basis. If you have, I mean, for everything that you buy, there are so many variations of it. And one of the things that can kind of give you that competitive edge is if you can align with what your audience is looking for when it comes to ethos or, um, you know, what your what your why is and if that aligns for what they're looking for and what they're comfortable aligning themselves with. Next up is in the past year, nearly half of customers chose to buy from brands that have a clear commitment to sustainability. Studies have shown that 71% uh, rise and a 71% rise in online searches for sustainable goods. You know, of course, we're seeing a lot about the earth, how we can treat it better. So again, is that one of the things that, that aligns with you? Does that make sense for your brand to kind of put that at the forefront, maybe on your website and be able to communicate that to your audience and kind of get a larger market share by sharing what's important to you and your brand? Last but not least on this slide, consumers are willing to spend more money and accept slower shipping times for the right brand. So we're going to talk about this a little bit. Again, most of us starting out are not Amazon. We can't offer same-day delivery by drones or Jeff Bezos' rocket. So if you are able to articulate why you're doing something, a lot of times once you've connected with and built your audience, your target audience, then they will understand and be excited to support you. They're not worried about getting something the next day because they know that by buying directly from you, they're able to support you, put more money in your pocket and support your business. So they're willing to say, hey, okay, fine. I'll wait a week for my book. I'll wait two weeks. You just have to make sure that you're setting up those expectations in the beginning and that you're, again, really landing on that target audience so that they're there to support you in your mission and your journey for your business and brand. Next, the continuation of the trends. 52% of customers are more likely to purchase from a, a company with shared values. We've been talking about that. Acquisition costs are rising. So what that means is what it takes for you to get a customer. So brand building help will help with customer attraction and retention. Again, you know, a lot of if you're buying a bottle of water, so I was just reading an article about liquid death which is a hugely popular water water company. And you think water, I mean, how boring, like who cares? Just there are a million different brands of water. This one is so successful because they've just built such a strong brand. They're kind of bunking the trends or bucking the trends of what other water companies are doing. They're trying to be a little bit more sustainable. Their can is aluminum. Their marketing is really edgy. So in this very saturated, I guess pun intended, water market, uh, they've been able to, to carve out their own lane and get a huge market share because they're doing things differently. They're building a strong brand. And by doing that, they're able, I mean, everybody was drinking water before them. 
but they're able to help that customer acquisition because they have such a strong brand and message. Next up is worldwide e-commerce sales are expected to grow from 2.9 billion in 2018 to 6.3 billion in 2024. Everyone is buying online. I mean, we obviously all saw a huge uptick of this in 2020, uh, but the trends have started to continue. And I think, you know, one thing at Lulu that we saw that was very encouraging is not only were more people buying online, but more people were opening up their own e-commerce stores and saying, hey, this is the time I can do this too. And now there's so many tools that are available to us as entrepreneurs or to you to build the brand and the ecosystem that you need. So it's a great time to, to dip your toe in that and get in on that 6.3 billy, right? All right, last but not least, social commerce is still on the rise. And by 2025, sales via social media channels are expected to triple. So I think, you know, now uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, maybe Twitter. I know TikTok is also trying out some, some new shop uh, opportunities for you. So any social media platform that you are active on, they probably have or are looking into a way for you to sell directly through that channel. So another thing to keep an eye on. All right, I told you, shifted from Bezos, we're going cats and dogs now. So I hope that that's uh, palatable for everyone. All right, so I talked about why Amazon is so good at what they're doing. So how can you employ these same strategies? So I'm just have a short list here and we're gonna dive deeper into each of these coming up. So on the customer journey, that just means what your customer, the path that your customer goes through to buy your book or your products, you wanna take ownership of that and really make sure that it is perfect and frictionless, as I mentioned earlier. Incorporate direct sales, direct-to-consumer trends. We talked about that. Market smarter. So by owning the customer journey, by incorporating direct sales, you're going to be able to get this data and information and touch points that you can use to remarket and market smarter, not harder. Collect and review data. We're going to get into that as we've talked about. And invest in the long game. Like I said, I mean, opening or just because you start selling direct, no matter what it is, usually, I mean, unless you have like a huge endorsement from, you know, I don't know, some celebrity, then It'll take a while for you to build your, your audience. It'll take a while for them to trust you, to understand what you're doing, and to really get behind you. So invest in the long game. Just like everything worth doing, it takes a while. It takes your professionalism, you showing up on a regular basis and investing in it so that other people will want to invest in it too. All right, so let's talk about the customer journey. So if you do not have an author website or a website, then that's where you start. So I hear a lot about, you know, a lot of people talk about own versus rented land when they talk about the internet. Basically what that means is instead of having, you know, your sales page on Amazon, instead of having all of your audience as, you know, Twitter followers or on Facebook or wherever, you have your own real estate on the internet. You've cut out your own corner of the internet. You have your own website where you are communicating directly to your audience and you own that. So regardless of what happens with, you know, any of these behemoths in the game, your audience still has a place to come to connect with you and get your news and updates and information. So if you haven't already, go ahead and open up that uh, or start that author website and get that going and have that be kind of one of your pillars uh, that, is, that is holding up your brand. Build an email list. The email list is so important. We talk about this all the time at Lulu because it's just such a great, I mean, email, I didn't put the statistic on there. Uh, maybe I should add it, but email is like the number one way to convert sales. So, I mean, people will think, oh, well, but social media, that's so huge. Everybody else on social media, whatever. Yeah, a lot of people are, but think about that inbox, that sweet, sweet inbox. You got to get in those DMs. Well, that I guess just the inbox, not really the DMs on social media, but when you have someone in your inbox, when you think about you as a consumer, so the newsletters you subscribe to, the brands that you will sign up for, all of that, that's really a special connection. That's a direct connection to you. So being able to build out your email list gives you, again, that direct link to your audience where you can tell them anything you want. You can share your blog, your newsletter, um, your ads, your promos. Your, you can sell some in space once you really start growing it out to other brands that want to get in front of a, a shared audience. So there's so much potential in the email list. So that's kind of a, a number two here is when you're thinking about the customer journey, the email list is so involved with that. So you can remarket, um, reach out, say, hey, did you like the book? Leave me a review. How did you hear about? me, uh, the, the opportunities are endless. All right. So to own the customer journey, this third point is so important, complete end-to-end -end testing. 
So, you know, you say you set up your website. It's beautiful. Obviously, it looks wonderful. You're so excited about it. You're like, all right, let's go. Sales day. Let's start this. You know, invite everybody to come out and start buying stuff from your website. And hopefully it'll go great. But just like ordering a proof copy for your book, that's kind of what end-to-end -end testing is. So when you have your products up, when you have your um, e-commerce site ready to go, you as you want to go into it as the customer. You want to go through every step of the way. So from landing on your homepage to going to the sales page to um, getting an item, putting it in your cart, putting in your information, going through the checkout, you want to end to end. So from the start to when you have that product in your hand, you want to complete that. And not only you, but have some friends and family do it as well so that they can tell you, hey, you know, I actually wasn't really sure where to go to buy your book or it was hard for me to put in my address because it's a little bit longer than most or, you know, these things that you as the creator of the website or the product may kind of not see or take for granted. Or, of course, it's easy for you to navigate the website because you created it. But someone may be able to, an outsider may be able to come in and say, hey, you know what? Actually, I was looking for your contact information. I couldn't find it. So maybe you can make that a little bit more readily available. Or I was wondering how long it would take for me to get my product. Where can I find that information? So complete end-to-end -end testing to make sure that the process from landing on your page to getting the product in the mail is as seamless as possible, as frictionless as possible. I like that term. So you'll want to go through that. That I mean, help your help them help you, that classic term. So end-to-end -end testing is a good way to do that. Next, create a customer service strategy. So this, uh, this little guy that I have here, I love this slide. I feel like this is what we think about when we think of customer service as like not a delightful experience. But by thinking, and I think also, you know, sometimes as authors or publishers or, or small businesses or whatever, you don't always think about the customer service part because, you know, maybe you're a one man or one woman band. So that's not always the, the top of mind thing. But taking some time to think, hey, can I set up an FAQ page to make sure that these really um, frequent, frequently asked questions, right? Like, where is my package? Where can I find tracking information? How do I get in touch with you? What if I need to cancel or change an order? All of these things should be readily available on your website to A, make sure that your customer service or your email queue for questions is kept down to a minimum and B, people think that you're legit. I mean, I, I bought things before and if you can't find sort of that standard information easily, then you're kind of like, oh, is this a scam? Where's this coming from? Is this a real company? So making sure that you let your customers know, hey, I'm available. Here's when I'm available. Here's how you can reach me. Here's, uh, you know, the questions that are usually asked. You might be able to find your answer here. And doing all this can help really build trust with your audience and make that process a little bit easier. Um, I think that maybe we'll talk about customer service again in another slide, but I'll also add here that when someone contacts you with a complaint, that can be one of your best opportunities to have a lifelong customer. I mean, I'm personally dealing with an issue right now with, I love buying from Etsy. Etsy is like my favorite place to shop. I love Etsy so much. Um, and that's all, that's an individual seller marketplace, right? And so I, right now I had ordered something, it was shipped to the wrong address. And I was really frustrated with the seller because they had asked me to confirm it. And before I could, they sent it somewhere else. So that was frustrating to me, obviously. And and I was like, okay, well, this is going to be reflected in the review uh, once we get this sorted out. But she has been in touch with me the whole time. The communication has been so clear. Like she's been checking in with me regularly. How can we get this fixed? And she's let me know from beginning to end, I'm not going to let this go. I'm not going to give up. We, you know, we're going to get through this together. You're going to end up satisfied. And so because of that, now I can't wait to leave her review that says, hey, it didn't start out stellar, but she stuck with me through the end and it worked out. So I think that those, some of those things can really, those um, situations that may seem like, oh, this person's writing me to complain, be empathetic, give them a minute to explain what's going on and meet them where they are. I mean, that's really all we want when we're complaining, right? Is just someone to listen and say, hey, I'm with you. We're going to make sure this is right. You know, do whatever you can. So just a little personal anecdote uh, about customer service there. All right. And last but not least, establish a social media presence. I am not a huge fan of social media personally, but you know, it is, I don't want to call it a necessary evil because I don't really think it's inherently evil, but it's not for everybody. So I'm not telling you that you have to be like on TikTok and, uh, and Instagram and Facebook and Twitter all day, every day, but social media, you know, at the end of the day can be a really great way for you to connect directly with your audience and to show more of your personality or your brand's personality and get that engagement. So if you haven't started, you know, exploring social media, 
really, it would go back to your target audience. Who is your target audience and what platforms are they very active on? And then go there and see if that makes sense for you. All right, so next up, direct sales, direct to consumer. This is what we're talking about. Um, I love this little dog. He just looks like a used car salesman, but he looks like a salesman. So I thought it, I thought it made sense. Uh, okay, so direct sales. What are direct sales? We talked about that, right? It's selling your product right to your consumer, cutting out the middleman. You can do this several ways. So I'm going to talk about books specifically here. But if you're selling your books, or I mean, you could say this for products too, but you can do it in person at events. You know, we're going back to conferences now, going to events, trade shows. If that's where your audience is, bring a box of books. You can hand sell them that way. That's a direct sale. You can also sell through your website, as we've talked about, which I highly encourage you to do, regardless of how you do it. So you can take orders online and then hand fulfill them. Maybe you have one day a week where you're doing packing parties and then going to the, the post office. Fine, that's one way to do it. Um, that'll still give you the opportunity to have those audience analytics and insights and be able to see who's buying your stuff, just as, as selling at in-person events too. And then last but not least, Lulu Direct uh, is our e-commerce solution. So Lulu Direct integrates with Shopify and w WooCommerce or WordPress. So if you have a, I saw someone that mentioned they have a Shopify store. If you already have a Shopify store set up, you download our app, upload your books, and you can sell directly. Um, if you have a WooCommerce or a WordPress site, you can just enter that URL into WooCommerce, sorry, into WooCommerce and then connect that to your Lulu account and start selling directly that way. So we've got a couple options there and we'll continue kind of branching out with our e-commerce integrations because we know it's important for people to have that solution. So why? I mean, at this point, I've given you some reasons, but we'll, we'll hit it again. Uh, so you retain more revenue per sale. Again, you're cutting out the middleman. So there's more coming back to you. That customer data I talked about, so important. It keeps your brand front and center. So you know, a lot of times before we were doing this, before this really became something that we were seeing a lot of people resonate with or be interested in, you know, we would work with authors or I would see authors that, I mean, even when you're building a business, it's so hard to get people to give you the time of day. It's so hard to get that person to the point of, um, of what do they call it? Uh, transact yeah, transaction where you're um, make, turning that into a sale. It's really hard to do that. So it would always kind of frustrate me when I would see people work so hard to build their audience. You've got your web page set up, you're owning your slice of land, you're doing all the things right. And then when it and when it comes time for that transaction, you're like, hey, go ahead and go to Amazon and now and then you can buy that book. <laughs> so it's like right when it's time to cross the finish line, you're sending them to another retailer. And who knows if they'll finish that transaction or not. So um keeping your brand front and center, keeping people on your web page can be really beneficial to growing your brand. And then automation. So if you do decide to do these things manually and hand fulfill orders on your website, that's one way to do it. But by plugging into a, a, a integration like Lulu Direct or a solution like Lulu Direct, you're automating the print and fulfillment. So orders come through your website, they are transmitted to Lulu to print and fulfill, and then they're sent out to your readers and to your customers. So you can white label this, so you don't have to have our packaging or our branding on it. It's your packaging and your branding, or I'm sorry, your branding on the packaging. So it's a white label solution uh, to keep your brand front and center and help you with automation. So it saves you time. All right, so market smarter. So SEO and SEM, if you're not familiar with how to use that or what that is, search engine optimization and search engine marketing, that just means ranking on Google. So, um, you know, anytime someone wants to search your name or your book or your product, you want to make sure that you are ranking really high in those results. So the old joke is you could hide a dead body on the second page of Google results. <laughs> I don't encourage that. I'm not endorsing that here. Um, but, you know, that's the joke. Who goes past the second page of Google results unless you really know what you're looking for? So making sure that you're using SEO and SEM to have those search results really favor your information. If you wrote a really great blog post, if you're just trying to sell your books, if you're trying to become a, a, a subject expert in some topic, using SEO and SEM to make sure you're ranking really high when someone tries to search for that topic, theme, genre in Google. Paid ads. So if you are using social media, every single, I think pretty much every single social media platform has some sort of way for you to pay for ad space. So whatever social media platform you are active on, no, I take that back. Whatever social media platform your audience, your target audience is most active on, that is where you want to put your ad dollars. Um, and we'll talk about some data that you can get from that and how you can use that in a bit. So influencer marketing, 
I really love this one. What I I can kind of I could kind of update this to micro influencer marketing, which I think is actually more advantageous. Uh, we did a, a webinar on this recently um, for Lulu, but I was just talking about this today because we were talking about newsletter ads. And so micro influencers, influencer marketing, we've probably all heard of that. It's basically just whatever your niche, your your genre, your topic is, um, what who your audience is, finding someone who is in that similar space. And cross promoting or reaching out to them and saying, "Hey, will you review my book? Or will you um, have me on to do an interview about this topic? Or can I? Uh, would you share this video that I did?" And having you know having them share with their audience, so you can kind of share that and get in front of a wider group. So I'll also just take a minute to say for influencer marketing, this is uh, something that that or micro influencer marketing might be something that's a little bit easier. You're finding folks who have. A couple thousand followers, maybe rather than a couple the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, that could be more approachable. And then I also find those smaller audiences to be more engaged and more trusting of you know whoever they're following, the influencer, if you will. So micro influencing is definitely or micro influencers is definitely another great way um, to market and to kind of get in front of folks. And maybe if it aligns enough, you could do a swap where it's not costing you money; you're just cross promoting. All right, coupons and promotions. So when you sell direct, you obviously have the ability to discount coupon and market. So um, I, I subscribe to a, a, a newsletter called um, Calendar Every Day is a Holiday or, oh gosh, I'm blanking on it. Um, but every day there's a holiday. So that's uh, that's kind of the, the, the crux of it. So uh, every single day I get an email that says, hey, this is literally a day. Hey, it's a sneak zucchini onto your neighbor's porch day. Or hey, it's a... Cats in Suits Day, or hey, it's Spaghetti Day, or whatever. Every single day there is a holiday. So, or well, there's some observance, I would say. So, I uh, was looking at some articles around the holidays and just how to do holiday marketing. And I really like someone had phrased it like a holiday is really any day that encourages your audience to act differently than they would normally. So, maybe you have written a book and the uh, main character loves. Um, you know, chocolate and, and taking bubble baths. So when National Day Calendar tells you that it's National Bubble Bath Day and one day it will be, then you say, hey, today's a BOGO sale. Today is buy one, get one for a friend sale. Uh, today is, you know, buy this. Maybe you have like a bath bomb that goes along with it. You, you can bundle these things. So I would, National Day Calendar is I believe what it's called. Subscribe to that and have fun with it. I mean, one of our best promotions when I started at Lulu was like Waffle Day. And we just sent out an email that was like, it's Waffle Day. So whatever our CTA was, people love that. So having a little bit of fun with your uh, coupons and promotions, getting creative and thinking out of the box can be a really, a really great way to connect with your audience or, you know, maybe you as a brand have, you know, let people know that you love, um, you know, sustainability, the earth is important to you. So on Earth Day, run a promo then. There, the, there's op opportunities are endless. All right. And then reviews and testimonials. So We've talked about this, how Amazon does such a great job with this. Um, everyone, before they buy something on Amazon, is looking at those reviews. So you can do that too. You know, invite people to leave your reviews. Uh, if you have, you know, some testimonials about your book, about how it's impacted people, about, you know, what the readers are thinking and feeling, then put that on your website and make it easy for people to see. Um, and if you want to go a little bit farther on your sales pages, putting your, your reviews or having a plug-in like Trustpilot or something like that that serves them up, and as they come in, you can see them. Um, and then that's a really great way to have that social proof and, and encourage people to purchase your book. All right, now's the time to talk about data. I mentioned it a billion times on this, uh, on this webinar already, but collecting and reviewing data is so important. And not only collecting it, but reviewing it is really the important part. I mean, you can collect it till you're blue in the face, but if you're not taking a minute to say, hey, you know, what is this telling me? What is my audience telling me? Then you might as well not even collect it. So here are a few different types of data that you can collect from direct sales and from doing uh, some direct to consumer transactions. So transactional data, number one. So when someone buys you buys your book, you're able to see, you know, there are different fields you can you can um, it put, include or ask for, but obviously name, address, email address. Um, you know, if you want to, you know, send create an email campaign that fires off when someone buys your book that says, hey. Thank you for buying my book. Uh, if you have a minute, will you tell me how you heard of me? Or if you have a minute, you know, go ahead and subscribe to my newsletter. Respond to this email and let me know something about you. You can also do that and have a lot of fun with that. Um, so transactional data is one of the huge pieces of information that you're able to collect through direct sales that can really help you learn more about your audience and how to connect with and market to them. 
email performance. So once you have your email list up and running, you're emailing regularly, you love it, it's great. You can look through on a weekly or a monthly basis. Um, I would say probably maybe maybe every other week, take a minute and just say, okay, I sent out three emails over the past two weeks. Which ones did really well? Which links are getting clicked? Which ones are getting open? So open rates are obviously huge. Um, you can see, hey, I, I played around with my subject lines a little bit. Did that work out? Um, customization is saying, hey, Chelsea, I've got a 20% off coupon for you. Did that perform well? Uh, so looking at the email performance and seeing what content and, and subject lines are really resonating with your audience and doing more of that and less of what isn't really resonating. Paid ads. So as I said, whatever uh, social media platform you are venturing out into, as you start running ads on them, you can look at analytics. Every single social media platform has its own analytics that it will offer you that you can see. So looking at those ads and how they perform, the reach um, and the engagement is a great way to find out where you should be spending your dollars and how you should be doing ads on social media. Also social posts. So obviously you can see your likes and shares and engagement. Take a look at that. I know that you know, it's, it can be hard to do this. As I mentioned, you know, earlier, I do a lot of our YouTube content and sometimes I'll work on something and be like, oh my gosh, I crush it. So hilarious, Chelsea, you're nailing it. And then it'll be like a tumbleweed when I look at the engagement on that video. So even though it can be hard, you maybe think that something is going to really, really crush it with your audience. They're going to be the ones to tell you that. So look at those social posts and take to heart, you know, what information you're gleaning from that and use it to really refine and enhance the content that you're sharing. Site traffic. So as you start building out your website, how much traffic is your homepage getting? If you're trying to send people to your blog or newsletter, how much traffic is going there? Your sale pages, which ones are converting? Which ones aren't converting? So looking at your site traffic and the information you can get from that will help you understand, maybe my website's a bit clunky. You know, I really wanted people to go to the sale page first. They're not doing that. How can I make sure that customer journey is a little bit easier and that they're getting to the place that I want them to go, which obviously ultimately is checkout and abandoned carts. This one is great. So once you really get your email list and your email campaigns really rocking and rolling, doing a cart abandon feature uh, can be really nice. I think Shopify has this that you can take advantage of. WooCommerce, I'm sure, has some sort of plugin that you can use to do this too. But this is essentially, maybe somebody buys something or maybe they want to buy something, um, but then maybe they, you know, their the power goes out of their house, their cat runs away, you know, they're, uh, whatever they're making for dinner starts burning. I don't know, whatever. But for some reason, they did not complete that transaction. They didn't convert. So by able to by a by being able to see that abandoned cart uh, information, those analytics, you can remarket to those people. Say, hey, we we held on to your cart. We saved it for you. Come back and get it. Here's ten percent off as an enticement. Or you can kind of see where people dropped off. Or maybe you understand now that. You know, a lot of people are putting it in the cart, but is it my price is too high? Is it that my shipping rates aren't uh, accommodating? All of this, all this information you can glean from from looking at these different data points. All right, and last but not least, invest in the long game. So <laughs> you want to nurture your email list. So once you have it, don't just email people to say, "Hey, thanks for buying my book. See you later," or "Hey, leave me a review." You don't want to just be asking them to do things for you. I mean, they already did something for you, right? They bought your book and they signed up for your email list. So reward them with good content or delight them with, hey, here's a special discount just for you. Or, hey, thank you so much for signing up. Uh, here's a little bit about me. Or here's where you can expect from me. Here's my newsletter. Here's some really great content that I know you're going to enjoy because you're my target audience. So nurture your email list and give them good content to delight their inbox. Provide great customer service. So I talked about this during a personal experience there, but providing great customer service is such a wonderful way to turn one-time readers into lifelong fans and really build that loyalty and trust with your audience. Use analytics to drive marketing decisions. So once you have your demographics and your geographic location, that transactional data, you can see things like this. So I always like to give this example, but there are some Lulu authors uh, who wrote a book. They're based in the UK. And they wrote a book called Scarred for Life. Um, you can find it on lulu.com. But they sell, they've created this book that's about uh, basically the horror of growing up in the UK in like the 60s and 70s and some of the terrifying stuff they saw on TV through like PSAs and don't do drugs and stranger danger and all that stuff. Uh, so they, they wrote these books because they were looking for some summation of the things that they got, they went through as children and they couldn't find it. So they were like, well, we'll make it. 
So they made these books. They became very successful. They sell them, you know, uh, all over the world. And they wanted to know where are our readers coming from? We're thinking about doing live shows based on this content. And they were able to look at the data from who was buying their book and where those folks were located and planning their live shows based on the highest concentration of where they're selling books. So that's just such a cool way, uh, a cool real world example of someone using analytics to drive their marketing decisions. So they're like, I was thinking about doing a live show. Can we do that? Well, let's see what the data is telling us. Is there one area where a lot of people know our work and are buying it? Let's start there. And it's been a success. So um, using that, that's just a good example of using that information to market um, and market smarter. All right, and ask for feedback. So. Asking for feedback, obviously huge, saying, what did you like about my book? What did you like? Will you leave me a review? What did you like about the checkout process? Was there anything that hung you up? Was there anything that I could have done that made this easier for you? Um, so ask for feedback, but then the caveat to that is you have to listen to it. Um, so again, you know, I was looking at a, a brand that really touted themselves as being really customer and content first. Um, and they've made a lot of changes recently to their product line and their users are saying, hey, we're telling you, you know, if you're on social media all the time, we're telling you exactly what we want. And you're not listening to us. Why? So be sure that if you are going to ask for feedback, if you are going to do, you know, a Twitter poll or send out a survey or, you know, however you're going to ask for it, just be prepared to act on that and some or acknowledge it in some capacity. And then subscribe to industry newsletters. So I subscribe to a ton of newsletters related to publishing and e-commerce. Um, and so whatever your niche is, whatever you want your niche to be, whatever your industry or lane is, if you will, make sure, I mean, there's newsletters for it, trust me. So go out there, find out where people are, the, the industry experts or leaders are kind of talking about what's next and what's new and subscribe to it. So you can kind of be on that cutting edge as well. All right, so this, Kelly Oliver is a Lulu author, and I wanted to just share an example of what her direct sales process looks like. So this is her homepage. Um, so you can see she's got the Jessica James mystery series, like Nancy Drew, she drank Jack Daniels, which I love. Uh, so you can see her sales page here. So you land on her homepage, she's got her, her um, She's got her, her name, her description, a little bit about her, and then she just hits you with her series um, and so and her little comp like Nancy Drew. So I love that. She's got the review right under her books, so you can easily get into it. It's very easy to navigate. So this is what it can look like when you are selling your books directly. And next, I wanted to show you when you hit her product page, which actually, if you click on the books, it'll just scroll down. So it's kind of an infinite scroll page. But you can see her, uh, her book description. Uh, you can see her awards that she's won for this, read praise for the series. You can read an excerpt. And one other thing I wanted to note, I know that this talk has been very heavily about selling direct, direct sales, how to do that. But I want you to consider this as a part of your strategy. So I'm not telling you to only sell direct and not put your book everywhere else. Your book needs to be wherever your readers are. So you can see here, she's got IndieBound, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Audible, and then her Shopify link. And to entice people to buy directly from her, she says, get a discount from Shopify. So there are ways that you can make this work as a piece, as just one instrument in your concert of, of sales, uh, if you will. All right, so how can you get started selling direct to consumer as a publisher? Select your platform, obviously. So what is your e-commerce platform? Are you going to use Shopify? Are you going to use uh, WooCommerce for your WordPress site? There are a ton out there. So start there. Figure out what platform you're going to use and be familiar with it. Then map out fulfillment and resources needed. So again, as I mentioned with Lulu Direct, we will automate the print and fulfillment for you. But if you're not going to go that route, you got to figure out how will you fulfill these products? How are you going to fulfill your books? Who's going to take care of that for you? What resources do you need to do that? Plan, it all goes back to planning, right? So define your goals and then do your research. So define your goals. What is what is success gonna look like to you in one week, one month, six months, one year? Take a minute to plan that out so that as you're going along, you can enjoy it and celebrate your successes and understand that your failures are just a t an opportunity for you to kind of reevaluate and step forward again. Execution, of course, you gotta do the thing. <laughs> you gotta do the thing and you gotta tell people that you did it. And then stay up to date on direct to consumer trends. So as I mentioned, uh, that's a great opportunity for you to just subscribe to newsletters, see you know what kind of new terms you're seeing, what trends you're seeing, what are people doing, what do they like, what don't they like, and kind of be a fly on the wall for some of those bigger conversations and see how you can implement that in your own business. 
All right, so some free resources for you. And I've got, uh, this is pretty much my last slide. And then I would love to open it up for questions. Let's see. Yes, it looks like I'll give you uh, 10 minutes to do that. So Lulu University. So here's some resources really directly tr related to what I spoke about today. So if you go to YouTube and search for Lulu University um, or Lulu Press, you'll be able to see our YouTube channel. You can search there for how to sell books through your own website or just search how to search books through your own website and it should come up. Um, I always like to give the caveat as I do those videos. So if your ears are bleeding at this point, then read the blog, which I have next. So on our blog, we've got a direct to consumer book selling blog that'll kind of talk about a lot of the things I mentioned today, but really kind of get a little bit more in the nuts and bolts of selling books and how to get started with that. Um, if you're interested in other resources, we post a ton of content to social media. You can find us on all platforms at lulu.com. And then last but not least, uh, Alexa mentioned this, but we have a 15% off uh, print book discount for all of you today. So you can take down this code. I believe it's good through June 1st. Um, so if you go, if you, you know, think, hey, that was kind of an interesting what that lady was rattling off about for an hour today, um, maybe I should check it out. So you can go to Lulu, you can buy any books in our bookstore for 15% off, or you can create an account create your own, buy a proof copy or a galley copy to check out the quality and kind of get familiar with the process and see if that is a good fit for you. All right, so I'll open it up for questions. Um, again, thank you everyone for, for taking the time to, to spend with me today. My email is cbennett at lulu.com and I'll be more than happy to help you with any questions that you have if we are not able to address them here. So thank you very much. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and open it up for questions. Uh, thank you so much, Chelsea. We have a lot of questions. So um, if you like, I can read them off for you, or I, that might be easier so you don't have to go looking through all the questions. Sure. Is that okay? All right, cool. All right, I'm going to start with the questions that were upvoted. Okay. So um, the first one, um, how does Lulu compare to other options with regard to the cost of printing and royalties? Yes. I don't know. Yeah, so thank you. That's a great question. So uh, for other options, I always like to say that, uh, you know, our platform is free to use. So you only pay when you want to buy print copies of your books. So um, I always like to tell people I, I feel our platform is very low risk, high reward. Uh, we also have a global print network. So regardless of where your readers are, we can get the books pretty much anywhere that FedEx will deliver. So if you are, uh, you know, international, then our books will print at the closest print facility to the delivery destinations. So that kind of helps us negate some ship times and costs. Um, so I always like to mention that as well. So we're global. We can handle international uh, authors and a reader base as well. Uh, we don't charge for revision fees or upload fees. So some some folks in our space will charge you for that. We don't. Um, so I think that's another another great option. We also offer coil bound. So if you are looking for a way to create a workbook, planner, notebook with a coil binding, um, I think we're kind of the only ones in the game right now that offer that. So that's kind of another uh, feather in our cap, if you will. And then last but not least, direct sales. So with Lulu Direct, we integrate with Shopify and WooCommerce. So you're able to sell your books directly to your audience um, and not have to worry about the print fulfillment. So uh, in regards to cost, uh, my best um, suggestion would be to go to lulu.com. Uh, from our homepage, you will see in the top navigation, there's one tab that says pricing. You can put in the specifications of your book. So the page count, trim size, binding type, if it's color or black and white, um, even your address or even your zip code. So we can give you some shipping estimates as well. And by doing that, you will be able to see your per unit cost uh, per book. Thank you so much. That was really helpful. Um, okay, the next question is a kind of a tech question, but um, if you already have a website, would you just add like a new page to sell your book? Would Lulu add it? So, or is it like a embed kind of thing? Yeah, so there are two ways you can do it. You can embed a buy button if you want to do that. And that would just essentially take people to Lulu um, for to buy your book. Oh, and let me just touch on, I didn't mention royalties. So I will say, if you do sell, we have our own bookstore at lulu.com. If you sell your book through Lulu's bookstore, um, the revenue split is 80-20, meaning you as the author get 80% and Lulu gets 20%. 
We also offer global distribution, which uh, means sales on Amazon, Ingram, and Barnes and Noble as well. So we can help you out there if that's what you're looking for. If you sell directly through your own website, you keep all of your revenue. As I mentioned, you're cutting out the middleman, um, so you're able to keep more revenue there. Um, so I just realized I forgot that. Okay, so for your sales page, do you need to add another one? It depends on how you want to set your website up. I mean, it's not by plugging into Lulu's uh, integrations, it's not going to automatically create a new page for you. I think it's a good idea to have a product page or at least a section and anchor on your website for your products and how to check out. But that's completely up to you how you want that layout and that flow to work. Um, and I think should kind of be based on the customer journey and what's going to make it easiest for your readers to find and purchase your books. All right, sorry. Okay. Um, so this is kind of a, I hope it's like um, a little hardball question. What's the difference between Lulu and a vanity press? Oh, good question. So vanity press, well, a funny kind of anecdote, I guess. Um, it would be we started because Bob Young, who's our founder, worked with the vanity press. So he co-founded the software company Red Hat and. Uh, he wanted to write a book about that and the publishers that he was shopping around didn't want it. Um, so he decided to work with a vanity press who made him buy like literally thousands of copies of his book. We still have them. Uh, we still have several in, in our office. If you want one, hit me up. Uh, but he did that and thought, this is terrible. This is an awful way to do this. So we're a print on demand. So you can buy one book, you can buy hundreds. That's kind of going back to the, the uh, high, low risk, high reward because you can buy one and say, hey, this isn't for me. I didn't, you know, for whatever reason, this isn't what I'm looking for and move on and that's fine. There are no contracts. Um, there are no minimum quantities. We don't make you do an offset run. Um, you know, you hold on to the copyright. So you can get one book and move on. You can buy hundreds of books. You can come to us as, as you want. So the difference between us and a vanity press is that we're not here to take the rights for your book. We're not here to make you sign any contracts. We're not here to, to make you uh, force you into any kind of exclusivity. Um, we're happy to be a part of your publishing plan. Um, and then we're print on demand. So we're never going to say to you, hey, yeah, that sounds good, but buy 500 books and then we can talk. So uh, all of those things kind of set us apart from, from a, a typical vanity press. Thank you. So my Zoom is like starting to slow down. So when I go to unmute, it like takes forever. To <laughs> Technology, I know. <laughs> Um, all right, can you talk about, um, you touched on it a little bit before, but can you talk about fulfillment capabilities in the UK and also how much it costs to set up a title? And I believe you don't provide ISBNs, right? People come like with that stuff already, right? We do provide ISBNs. Oh, so okay. yes, yeah, you can't, we provide ISBNs for free. So you can come to us and take a free ISBN. Um, and for the majority of our authors that works, I do always like to tell people that if you do take an ISBN from Lulu, we will be listed as the publisher in the imprint or the, yeah, the, uh, in the on the ISBN, the publishing imprint will be Lulu Press. Some people don't care. Some people do. Um, you can also bring your own. So if you have your own ISBN, you can also bring that to Lulu. Um, for title setup fees, we don't charge anything for that. You create an account on Lulu, which is free. Um, you'll need two PDFs to publish on Lulu, one for your interior file and one for your cover file. You'll go through our publishing platform and then you're published. And you obviously have some options of how to sell at that point um, and th throughout that process. But we don't charge for title uploads. Um, that is all free. In regards to publishing in the UK, we have a printer in the UK. We also have one in France, Australia, Canada, um, a couple, a handful of others. Uh, so we don't have any problems printing, you know, in the UK or fulfilling any any orders there. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I was saying awesome, good answer. <laughs> Um, can you talk a little bit about um, the Lulu direct fulfillment time and yes. what what factors impact fulfillment? Yeah, so our Lulu direct fulfillment time is going to be the same as what you can expect on Lulu.com. So if you order a book from Lulu.com, it usually takes anywhere from three to five business days to print, as most print-on-demand books will. Um, and then you can just look at as an additional shipping time from, you know, if you want to do priority overnight to, you know, ground 
Um, those will obviously add a couple of days as well. So if I'll, I'll direct you again to the Lulu book pricing calculator. So if you go into Lulu and go to the pricing, you will get shipping estimates. So what you're going to see in those shipping estimates are production and ship times together. Um, but we always you know, also have email communication. So you'll know when your product is shipped and when you can expect it. But yeah, for print on demand, it's going to be about three to five business days to create the book. Um, for hardcover, I like to say, expect the five. That just takes a little bit longer to create. And if you are planning for an event, I always like to tell people, give yourself at least two weeks to order the book and get it. Um, but of course, you have a little bit of flexibility on the ship time and whatever you're willing to pay to get you know faster expedited shipping. <laughs> the thumbs up is good. That's a good, that's a good. <laughs> Boom. Um, okay. So this is a really good question, I think. Um, it's about distribution. So if somebody wants to use Lulu for their website, but also use KDP and the Ingram book, does that can they do that? How does that work? For distribution, so for um distribution through Lulu, I mean so are you saying, I'm sorry, what's the difference between us and Ingram Spark or do we distribute through? <laughs> uh, let me see if I can. Uh, um, well, I guess they're asking if you control distribution. And um, oh. so like if they want to use just sell direct from their oh. website, but also have their book available on Amazon and yes. like through Ingram. Yes, absolutely. So, I mean, like I said, we, uh, you know, we're not greedy. We just want to be a part of the journey. We don't have to be the only part of it. I mean, I think your book has to be wherever your readers are. So if you already have an Ingram Spark account and you're publishing through them, and, you know, we see a lot of folks who maybe put their uh, paperback through Amazon and then come to Lulu for a hardcover version, or maybe you have a book on Ingram Spark, but you want to have a journal or coil bound supplemental supplementary material that goes along with it. And you want to sell that through Lulu, Lulu Direct, you can absolutely do that. I mean, you have to put together the the tools and resources that work for you. So yes, you can use Ink from Spark, you can use Amazon, you can use Lulu. We can all work together to uh, make you successful. All right, we are at the top of the hour. So um, we're not gonna be able to get to all the questions, but I see that some of these questions are um more related to um marketing so i think i will pop answers to those questions in the replay email um okay. although do you have a source like a kind of a one-stop shop for finding consumer trends that you would recommend so I would say Shopify is a really good one. Um, actually, when I was putting my presentation together and was like, oh, this information we have is really good, but we want to make sure it's updated. And so Shopify has a ton of great consumer reports. They're obviously huge in the e-commerce direct to consumer uh, game. So if you look at their website, they're usually putting out reports on a regular basis of, you know, kind of all, all kinds of different product sets and genres and, um, and topics. So I would say Shopify is a great one. But if you do, I actually just signed up for a direct-to-consumer newsletter yesterday. So if you look at, I mean, I would just Google direct-to-consumer newsletters and see what comes up and what, what speaks to you and what might entertain and, and educate you and then sign up for it. You can always unsubscribe. Um, okay. I um, thank you so much, Chelsea. Um, you, you're getting like a lot of um, big ups in the chat. <laughs> I don't know if you could see that. <laughs> Great, um, thank I just dated myself a little bit with that face. Um, <laughs> um, okay, everyone, um, don't forget, if you buy your um, ticket by 3 p.m. Eastern today, we are going to um, have a little fun and pick some winners for that um, fun ticket. Um, don't forget to check out Lulu at lulu.com. I will... But for those of you that are asking about the coupon code, that will be in the replay email. I promise I will put it in there. And um, we will try to get the replay out um, by tomorrow at this time. And again, if you have any questions, you can contact Chelsea. I'll put her email address in the replay email as well. So hey. thank you again, Chelsea. Yes, thank you. I just dropped it in. Uh, so the chat, don't hesitate to reach out.
Thank you, everybody, for spending some time with me today. Thank you, Nancy, for your help with the questions and the big ups. So thanks, everybody. <laughs> uh, happy little Friday and have a great day. I'll see you later. <laughs>